Welcome to Land Talk, the program that tells the stories of landowners and their properties. My name is Matt Sykes. Today we continue our journey through the West Gippsland and Mornington Peninsula region by visiting a landowner who champions the values of trees in holistic land management. Located between Druin and Lang Lang in a small township called Ripplebrook, we find ourselves in the backyard of Pat Dunn. Pat, thank you Get for having us. How are you? Good, okay, so shall we go inside and have a cup of tea and, and talk about your property in a bit more detail? Two rolls. Fantastic, let's go. Okay. Pat, you, you grew up in, in the local area um, and you've come to this property. Yeah, can you tell us a, a bit about that story? Sure, well I did grow up at Druin South, only about uh, seven or eight kilometres here as the crow flies, mm -hmm. from here actually. And, um, oh well, at the age of 18, many kids of my age at that time were uh, finding difficulty getting work in the local area, and I headed to Melbourne. But I always had a passion for the, uh, mm -hmm. not only this region, but um, the country as a whole, mm -hmm. and uh, sort of nature and the things that it offers. So, after spending a uh, kind of a professional career in town, mm. uh, very pleased to be able to spend a lot more time in what I've developed down here since. Today, what are the different components of the property? Well, essentially, it's my main uh, dwelling, my main home, Yes. and uh, I do spend a bit of time in town as well, mm. still, with the business that I have down there, mm. but uh, essentially, the 300 acres houses two legitimate businesses, mm. both uh, doing quite well. One of them in horticulture, yes. where some uh, 12 years ago now I got involved in growing advanced deciduous trees. Mm. So approximately 15 acres is um, uh, attributed to the nursery. Trees are a big part of, of your life and, and you've, you've obviously got the the nursery uh, on the property, but you've been involved with land care for a long time, you've been involved with um, water for a long time. Um, what are some of the, the ways, the different ways that you've used trees around the property? Well, even before I got involved, say, on the nursery side, I was very much wanting to look at ways of bringing a lot more of the natural wildlife, mainly bird life, back mm. into the area. Mm. Um, and when the nursery opportunity came along, which was really in line with buying the first uh, adjoining property back yes. in the year 2000, mm. at the same time as starting a, a nursery, mm. uh, I embarked on wildlife corridors okay. across that 110 acres and uh, fencing out the valleys to stop erosion for mm -hmm. the cattle and in a very short period of time that was basically through the assistance of Melbourne Water okay. which I think is a an excellent program mm -hmm. along with Landcare too I think uh, they do a great job both of those um, organisations mm -hmm. uh, but in a very short period of time I saw the particularly bird life coming back into yeah. the area yeah. and uh, so now um, I have some quite extensive uh, plantings through valleys mm. and uh, trying then to uh, adjoin a few small areas of bushland. Mm. Uh, my goal is to make sure that I can link all those up yeah. and uh, have some travelling corridors for mm. land wildlife as well. Uh, around the house you've got this amazing setting of a, of a garden um, and out in the, the adjoining paddocks you've got quite interesting plants of trees. What's, yeah, can you talk about those those elements in, in more detail? Around the, gar uh, around the house, the garden yes, side? Yes, yeah. Initially, um, the focus for the garden around the house mm -hmm was not only for beautification of the area where I live, mm. but also to showcase the types of trees that we grow mm. and how that can, how they can work in combination with, um, say, native understory. Yes, yes. 
and because we're deciduous, so in this area, and particularly these last couple of winters that have mm. been fairly wet and pretty cool, mm. um, having the deciduous gives the balance between uh, letting sunlight in through mm. Uh, to the house in, in the winter months, mm, mm. but in the summer months have that canopy for shade through the garden mm. where, well, we can display to customers mm. and prospective clients yeah. um, what an advanced tree look like mm. looks like and what it can actually add to, mm. say, just a, a housing environment. Mm. And the way the garden is set up, it's uh, it can kind of replicate a small uh, allotment yes. or, or on a grander scale as mm. we go down the driveway and you see some of the larger areas mm. that we've planted as well. This balance of using both local plants and, and exotic plants, um, it's, it's an interesting way the way in that it all fits together uh, and feng shui is actually an interest of yours. How does that uh, impact the way that you approach the land? Well, I think it's really from a more holistic approach. Mm. So, um, feng shui is important to me, the, the feel, mm. the energy. Mm. Um, and that's really where I'm coming from with these types of, mm. whether they be shelter belts or shade belts, that yeah. type of thing really. Um, it's getting the feel right, not just for me, but mm. for others that use the land, such as the cattle. Mm, mm. And uh, that's a pretty important part of yeah. getting the whole, the holistic approach. Yeah. You're working um, on a master plan for the property at the moment. What are your goals with that master plan? Um, I think really to have a, a, a property that's of reasonable size, mm. approximately 300 acres, that can really showcase the benefit of bringing a lot more uh, or a higher density mm. of uh, trees and um, sectioned off areas mm. where cattle can't roam and mm. um, damage various waterways or, mm. or plant life that I'm trying to protect to offer it to the likes of other bird life that we're mm. trying to attract and that's mm. working. But um, really showcase the, uh, the combination of native mm. and uh, deciduous trees mm. and plants. Mm. Excellent. Well, that seems like a good spot to, to wrap it up. So thank, right. thanks very much. It's been an absolute pleasure to speak with you. Man. And uh, yeah, it's just there's some extraordinary lessons for, for a lot of people that have the land, whether they've got you know, whether they've got a courtyard or whether they've got a 300 acre property, uh, just the different ways to use trees in that holistic approach. Uh, yeah, it's a real inspiration, so thank you. Thank you. From this one location, we can see the essence of Pat's attitude to trees. On my right, you can see a windbreak, which has been planted with indigenous species using direct seeding. It's ideal for providing wind shelter for the cows, and also uh, shelter for little birds that zip in and out. Behind me, we have uh, the creek corridor, which has been planted out also with indigenous species, protecting the, the waterway. In the distance, you can see an avenue of poplars, which has been planted along uh, Pat's roadside. You can also see the nursery in the back, but immediately in front of us is what takes us to the future. And that's this area which is these you know gentle mounds of trees which will become a park-like landscape when Pat starts planting uh, some of his deciduous trees. And it's all of these different elements that are going to come together in the future development of this property. And now it, you know it's it's the beginning, and it's going to take a whole lifetime to fully realise um, this place and, and even beyond. So that's this has been Pat's done. Pat Dunn's property uh, in Ripplebrook in Victoria. My name is Matt Sykes and this has been Land Talk.